Welcome back mates, today we're making adenine from benzoic acid. So today the sky is blue, so I decided to go outside to make the setup. Our regions are 68 grams of urea and 46, uh, I, I think I've put a little excess, normally it should be 46 grams, but here we got um, 48 grams of benzoic acid. So we're just gonna mix, the, mix them very quickly, you know, because they're gonna melt anyway. And what we're gonna have is a little system wheel with the Vigro Cologne and this thing, a bubbler to get the gases. Okay, so I've loaded everything inside, mix them as much as I could, but it's not really too important. I've lubricated the, the joints with some oil. What we should do is hopefully keep this thing at, um, I think, 180 degrees, I think it is, for as much time as we can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get the thermocouple right there and and stick it on, on something. Uh. I've opened the um, the lid a little bit because I think there was too much water still because you know it's very humid where I am, and I think there was too much water so the temperature could not get high enough. So right here is just some water boiling off, and when I smell a little bit of ammonia, which means the benzamide start to form, I'm gonna get back the setup. Also, look at how yellow it is, like, what the hell? How, how yellow is that? On a scale of 1 to 10, how yellow is that? Okay, boys, so I've started to smell the ammonia, so we can now close the thing. I mean, I just did close the thing, and I don't know if you can look on camera, but I see all those kinds of glitter. I don't know where it's from, but it's so cool looking. Like, how cool is this? I've dismantled everything, as you can see, we're back in the lab. And now, to dissolve everything, all of the benzamide, we're gonna take some ammonia and make um, 100 ml, I think, yeah, 100 ml of a 5% five, of five solution. So, to do that, it's, you know, it's an approximation, it doesn't have to be too precise. That's why I'm using the beaker, you know, like this. Around 40 ml of the 13% solution. And then we just... Complete with the with the water. All right, so now we're gonna transfer the solution of this one. I mean, it's it's a suspension, but you get the point. Basically, we're gonna transfer this inside of this, and we're gonna hit it to ninety degrees to hopefully dissolve everything. By the way, it does does smell like benzamide. It smells kind of ah, still some ammonia, but it, it smells a little bit of weird the the weirdness of the ammonia, but the roundness of the benzoic acid. If you if you know what I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a sweet, weird, good smelling. I, I understand that people will not like this smell, but I do, I do find it a little bit. Interesting, you know. <laughs> All right, my boys. Now we're gonna filter. This time I've got the some sort of vacuum kind of shit, whatever. So just gonna put everything there. <laughs> so it's extremely noisy, but extremely good. <laughs> see, see how dry that is. That is crazy dry. So this is this is my new method now. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna filter everything now. So here we have our just crystallized, uh, just filtered crystals. And as you can see, they're very yellow. So we're gonna do a second recrystallization. Sorry, I don't know how to speak. And to do that, we're gonna use 80 mils of the same ammonia solution that I used before. All right, so I've put the solution in this beaker. We're gonna filter it a second time. As you can see, it has very well precipitated a huge amount of product. Hopefully, you. <laughs> All right, so I'm also going to wash the product with some water, with some very cold water.
right? So here is a benzamide, just 13 grams of benzamide. Now we're gonna use all of it to make some aniline. So basically the, the reaction we're gonna do is called the Hoffman degradation or Hoffman rearrangement. And it's also used to make like hydrogen from urea or in general just make amines from amides. So benzamide to benzamide. Okay, so first we're going to make the bleach we need for a reaction. We, we actually need bleach and sodium hydroxide, which I have here. As you can see, it's written in NaOH. Uh, and to make the bleach, I'm going to use some calcium hypochlorite from pool, supply, garden, whatever chemicals, and some sodium carbonate. So this is going to make some insoluble calcium carbonate, which we then can just filter out. We're just left with a bleach solution, hopefully. First we're going to add 7 grams of the carbonate some water now we're gonna add 8 grams of this bitch and this should hopefully precipitate all of calcium carbonate leave or bleach inside so then we're just gonna filter the calcium carbonate with this funnel. I don't know if I'm gonna recover it because it's not too big of an amount. And I already have some calcium carbonate from, you know, eggshells or sea sea creatures, the shells. Just a little precision, because this is gonna be um, a bleach solution, a quite concentrated bleach solution, and you cannot you cannot really dilute it too much, otherwise it's gonna impact the reaction. It's already a little bit diluted, but yeah, you cannot use the normal filter papers. If you have some some glass paper filter, th I think that does work. But wh what I use is just some cotton because cotton is apparently much more resistant, and I, d I don't know, it just works. So yeah, don't don't waste a filter co um, a coffee filter on that because it's just gonna break. Well, hopefully the bitch is concentrated enough. It seems. It seems green, so <laughs> I mean yellowish green. You know the the bleach weird color. I I don't think you can really see that well, but yeah, ba basically it's the right color. I might even add some water to dilute it. So now that this is filtering, we're gonna weigh out 21 grams of sodium hydroxide. It seems like a big amount, and I've looked looked up the the reaction ratios, and yes, it it is a huge amount. I think it's five times the um, the benzamide ratio in moles, so yeah, it's quite impressive. Hold up, I need to look at the numbers. Maybe you want to look at the numbers as well. I'll show you, 15 grams, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, all right, we're good. So now we're just gonna dissolve this as well in some water and then chill out. Um, Maybe not in the fridge, we don't need that low of temperatures. I think outside is good because it's like 5 degrees again. It's pretty cold today, so pretty good. Just gonna add some water, which is right there. Alright, water, water, water. How much do I need? Alright, let's put a little bit more, just to the 100 mils. Good. It's not a precise amount as always, it's just water. And... I, I will have to mix this with the broken thermometer and then chill it outside. So here we have the sodium hydroxide solution. Here we have the bleach solution which has finished filtering and we're just gonna mix them. Right so Ooh. all right all right. So this is approximately 300 mils. Apparently it can, it can fit in the beaker, which is very good. It's it's it looks a little bit turbid because the um, the bleach is decomposing very slowly. It makes those bubbles, you know, and it looks a little bit turbid. So now we're going to add the benzamide first to the beaker. I've seen people do the opposite and it doesn't really matter too much, but in theory um Having the benzamide first and then adding the, the bleach and sodium hydroxide solution is slightly better. So I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Hopefully I get some yield. <laughs>
And now in theory, I should have stirring, but my stirring plate, which I made in the um, in the hydrogen video, is broken. So I will have to stir by hand and add this also by hand. Okay, I just had a bug with my camera, but here we are, a few seconds later, with the first clip. So we've just added the benzamide. As you can see, it's starting to form a little bit, somewhat slightly making those bubbles and this is an excellent size sign because it means the um, the isocyanide intermediate of the Hoffman rearrangement reaction is getting destroyed forming the um, the how the fuck is the name the aniline and some carbon dioxide which is the bubbles you can see so i i will stir this occasionally until it changes color and after some time i'll put it on the hot plate later Hell yeah, so the, um, the heating seems quite to be working because the, um, the solution is turning into tar and it's smelling like uh, fucking, I don't know, weird, fishy, you know, um, amines like aniline or um, methylamine, whatever. It smells like a little bit fishy, like pyridine smells a little bit fishy. This smells fishy, so I think that's a good sign we have we have made some aniline. Of course, it is still reacting right now, so I'm gonna let it. All right, so here is the setup. We're gonna add the aniline solution that we just made. Oh, fuck. It goes into the condenser. All right, anyway, let's continue. I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, that you can see better now. Put the clamp back even though it's broken. Starts to start to hit because it's very slow to hit. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna change that of camera. All right, so here is the completed apparatus. This is my camera thing, like, you know, I can, can put the camera on this. Uh, and as you can see, I put a lot of aluminum foil to protect it from the, from the sunlight. So hopefully today is not too much sunlight, you know, it's partly cloudy, which is pretty good. We, because the, um, the sunlight will decompose the aniline slowly, which we don't want, obviously. So yeah, a little bit of aluminum foil just in case. We never know. The thermometer right there, reading 12 degrees at the top. Alright, so as you can see, we are already collecting some aniline at the start, which is pretty weird, but pretty cool. I don't know about the color, but yeah, hopefully this is a hydrogen. Uh, the, <laughs> sorry, not hydrogen. Um, aniline. And yeah, it's, it's bumping sometimes. It's getting quite vigorous, boiling, you know, but that's good. So yeah, anyway, we're just gonna distill as much as possible. Then we're gonna add some salt to salt out the aniline. All right, so now we're gonna salt the aniline. Hold up, let me, let me do this. All right, here we have the aniline, and we stopped, we stopped the distillation. Here I have a bunch of salt. And basically what this is gonna do is, is, is that the salt is going to increase the polarity of the water. And the aniline is non-polar, mostly. And if the water is polar, as you can see, it's gonna be extracted or pushed pushed out of the water. And basically it should form an oily layer on the on the top that we can then separate with um with a separated funnel. So here we have the bunch bunch of salt. I don't know if you can, I'm gonna show you from real close because it's kind of cool looking. Yeah, boy. Of those droplets are, are aniline. And it smells. <laughs> I can tell you it smells a lot. 
All right, so now I'm gonna pour the, the aniline suspension in the drop-in funnel, which is closed, of course. Make sure to, to close it. When you forget, it's not funny. <laughs> okay, and this is this is just the salt because I added a little bit too much salt. As you can see, ah, oh, there is some aniline bits floating. That's annoying. Now we're gonna let this stand for as much time as we need for it to separate properly. Uh, if not, you can probably do a liquid liquid extraction with like something like, I don't know, hexanes, probably. Hey, you know what? I, I might actually do that. I'm thinking about it right now. Hmm, let, let me think. Alright, so here I have a little bit of heptane. Heptanes. You know, which I extracted from oil, not in a video though. And it seems to have worked pretty well. We have a clear layer now, but just in case, I'm gonna wait a little bit. Alright, now we can just drain the, the down water layer, salty water. Alright, now we should be good. So all of this is heptane mixed with aniline. So I'm just gonna put this in a little beaker, which I don't have right now. Okay, so see, see you later then. <laughs> Alright, so now we're just gonna take the onion layer into this tiny beaker, which I just had to clean. <laughs> Took me five minutes, very quick, very quick. And we're just gonna evaporate the heptane. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna evaporate it on the hot plate or just outside in the wind. I'm probably gonna just let it sit because I need to go for something else. But yeah, here you have it. Aniline from benzoic acid dissolved in heptanes, but that's detail. Oh, yeah, it smells like fucking heptanes. <laughs> so, the final step is just to boil off the excess of heptanes.